What's up everybody, it's Blaze from Funbox here. Let's keep going with programming our initialized phase. And in this one, we're actually going to spawn some basic units in. So to do that, the first thing that we're going to do is create two new objects. The first object will be our actual spawner itself. And I'm just gonna call mine C spawn. We're going to create another object, which will be the parent of all of the units in our game. So whether it's a player unit or an AI unit, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a child of each. Um, each of those objects will be a child of this parent unit. And because we're in such, the, such an early stage of development, at least for this demo, we're only going to spawn this one in. But as we proceed through the series, we'll replace it. We'll replace the code as well as the objects with the relevant objects in our game. So let's create some sprites here. We're just going to create a really basic sprite because it's just going to be a placeholder. So a regular, not white square, that burns. A regular orange square should do just fine. Let's assign that to our unit and put that there. And we can close that off because we're basically done with it. And let's go back to the manager. Before we write any new code for this video, we are going to need a cleanup phase. So I'll expand this one as well so that everybody can see here. And for this, I will zoom in as well. So there we go. That should be easier to see for everybody. Now I'm I am using a mechanical keyboard. So if you guys hear that in the background, then that's just my keyboard tapping away. Um, I'm tapping away at my keyboard because that's what I like to use. Um, but let's continue on. Let's actually spawn these units in. How do we do that? Well, like I said, we're going to do that in the initialize phase. If you want to put it in a separate part of your combat system, that's totally fine. That's up to you. This is strictly for reference and to build a foundation for you guys to essentially make your own versions of. But uh, for us, for our demo, I'm going to put it in initialize. So in the next line here, what we're going to do is we're going to run a for loop for however many spawn points are in the game itself. So let's write that out now and I'll explain each line after I finish writing it. So just bear with me for a second. All right, so these two lines of code basically does one thing. This first line here is it's going to set a variable which we call i, and it's going to set it to zero. You can name this variable whatever you want since it is a variable. And it's going to start at zero and it's going to keep looping this line of code until we hit the number of instances of C spawn. Now we haven't done that yet, but we're about to. So let's say, for example, that you have five C spawns in your game room. This line of code here will run five times, starting from zero. So remember, your computer numbers start at zero. It's going to go once, twice, three times, four times, five times. It's going to run this line of code and whatever we put inside of these two brackets. That's basically how a for loop works. Now, how do we actually get a particular spawn in the game? Well, it's going to loop through and it's going to use this instance find. And all it does is it finds the number. Again, it's we're using I here, right, as an argument. So it's going to take, say, C spawn zero. So which one is the first C spawn that we have? It's going to find that instance somewhere in the room and store it into this local variable here. Now, like I said, we haven't put those spawners in yet, but let's do that now. And so if we place this one here, our first C spawn, it's going to store number zero, the first one, this one here, 
into this variable. And then let's say we put the next one over here. The next one will naturally be this one. And then the third one. And then the fourth one. Now, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter which order you put your spawners into the game. What matters is where they're going to be located. Because again, in the future, as we actually add in enemy and player units, they are going to be determined by which side of the room they're on before the middle or after the middle of the room. So just keep that in mind. But for now, it doesn't really matter which um, spawner object we have because we, we only have the parent unit. We're not really concerned about where it is at the moment. We are just looking for the functionality. Now to spawn the actual units into the game, we're going to use instance create. Instance create depth to be more specific. You can use layer if you want, that's totally fine, but I'm going to use depth for mine. And of course it needs an X and Y position and we are actually going to use the spawner X and Y for that. And I'm gonna set my depth to, to zero. You can use whatever depth you guys want, but I'm just gonna use zero for mine and the actual object itself, which is P unit. Save that out. And let's try running this code now and see what happens. Okay, so there we go. We have our four units spawned in. We have no errors, so everything looks to be correct, but we need to do another thing. And that is to actually create a list that we can read from and also modify as we need to that has all of these player IDs in them, or not player IDs, all unit IDs. So both player characters and AI characters will be thrown into this list. And to do that, we're going to use a global variable. And I'm gonna call mine global units. And for that, we're going to naturally create a list. So ds list create. Cool, awesome, that's done. And according to the documentation, it's good practice that when you decide to create a list or a data structure of any sort, you should take the time to write its destroy code as well. So in our case, in the cleanup event for our manager, we're going to check to see if a DS list that's called global.units exists and then destroy it if it does. So like I said, if ds exists and we need a name for this so global.units and of course ds type list so if this list exists if this thing here exists and it is a list then we need to destroy it ds list destroy of course global.units it's just creating a safety net so that you don't end up with memory leaks and your game doesn't eat up all of the computer memory that you have, which naturally you want to save on memory. Now, we haven't added these units to the actual list itself. To do that, or rather a really simple way to do that is to simply store our unit itself, which I'm going to call unit, we're going to store the instance that we created into another variable. And then we're going to take that variable and use ds list add to put this unit, this one right here, into our global units. All right, so that's done there. If we try to play the game, nothing will happen, but I can guarantee you that it is stored into the units list. How do we prove that? By drawing in the debug section. So let's try writing some debug code for that now. I'm gonna use a for loop to print out all of the IDs of our spawned in unit.
All right, so let's take a look at this particular line of code. Um, I'm sure you guys know how for loops work now. So really quickly, if starting at zero, it's going to loop through each and every single um, unit, or it's going to loop the number of times according to the size of the DS list. So you can have as many units as you want in your game. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to draw the ID of that unit in the top left corner of the screen with a bit of an offset because we don't want our text, our units text to be overriding our, or on top of our combat phase text. We don't want that. And so that's why we start with 16 plus I multiplied by 16. But if you do, if you guys don't want to see your debug code, that's totally fine. Let's try playing our game now and see what happens. Okay, so we can now see that we have some IDs here. We have six, seven, eight, and nine. Why does it show six, seven, eight, and nine? Is actually because we already have one, two, three, four, and five in our scene. That's why it starts from six. If you guys still aren't um, comfortable with that number, we can also go into our unit, go to add an event, and we can also draw. In the draw event for our unit, we can just get rid of these two lines here, right in draw self, so that it will draw its own sprite. But we can also draw text at X and Y, maybe minus 16, so it draws above the actual sprite itself and we're going to write in string format its own ID so just in case you guys are super conscious about that we can see that each unit ID here six seven eight and nine is also listed in our units list up here in the corner which is exactly what we were aiming for so we're going to leave it here in the next section we're going to start adding some basic stats like speed into our units here. So we'll be working on our units and we will also be sorting them out so that each and every single encounter will be somewhat randomized. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.